Hello everyone and welcome to Robotics and Aerospace Tutorials. In this tutorial we explain one very important topic for properly understanding the kinematics and dynamics of rigid bodies. Namely, we explain the concept of rotation matrices. In particular, we will explain the meaning and derive the expression for the rotation matrix around the x-axis. In the next two tutorials we will derive the expressions for the rotation matrices around Z and Y axis. But before I start with explanations, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as almost 400 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. Consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Also, if you have a question or a comment about the material presented in this lecture, Please feel free to ask your question in the comments section below. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's start. Consider this figure. There are two coordinate systems. The coordinate system A and the coordinate system B. The coordinate system B is rotated with respect to the coordinate system A around the XA axis for the angle theta. The unit vectors of the coordinate system A are IA, JA, and KA, and similarly the unit vectors of the coordinate system B are IB, JB, and KB. Next, let's modify the previous figure by introducing the vector P. And here is the new figure. And let's consider this problem. Knowing the coordinates of the vector P in the coordinate system B and the angle of rotation theta around the axis xA, we want to find the coordinates of the vector P in the coordinate system A. To solve this problem, we need to introduce the following notation. The vector P represented in the coordinate system A is denoted like this. P with the superscript A and its coordinates are P XA that's the XA coordinate then P YA YA projection of the vector P and P ZA similarly the vector P expressed in the coordinate system B is denoted like this with its coordinates P, XB, P, YB, and P, ZB. By using this new notation, our problem can be stated like this. Knowing the coordinates PXB, PYB, PZB, that is, knowing the projections of the vector P in the coordinate system B, and knowing the angle theta, that is, this angle, we want to determine the projections PXA, PYA, and PZA of the vector P in the coordinate system A. Over here, it should be kept in mind that the vectors PA and PB are actually denoting the same vector P only expressed in different coordinate systems. The vector P expressed in the coordinate system A is given by this equation. Over here, IA, J, and KA are the unit vectors. Similarly, the vector P expressed in the coordinate system B is given by this equation, where IB B, J, B, and K, B are the unit vectors. Here, one thing should always be kept in mind. The unit vectors of both coordinate systems, A and B, are actually expressed in the same basis. That is, they are expressed by using coordinates of some other coordinate system. That's why we can establish this mathematical relation. P is equal to P, A is equal to P, B as a vector. That is, PA is equal to PB. Now, by taking this equation and by taking this equation and by substituting them in this equation, we finally obtain this equation. And this equation is very, very, very important. Next, 
Let us scalarly multiply this equation by IA. And let's see the result. So what happens over here on the left hand side? Obviously IA, scalarly IA, is equal to 1. That's why we have this term over here. However, what is JA scalarly multiplying IA? It's equal to 0. This is because JA and IA are perpendicular. Similarly, Ka multiplying Ia scalarly is equal to 0. That's why we only have this term over here. Next, let's scalarly multiply this equation by Ja. And as the result, we obtain this equation. Similarly to the previous case, we only have this term. This is because JA scalarly multiplying JA is equal to 1, and all other terms are equal to 0. And consequently, we obtain this equation. And finally, if we scalarly multiply this equation by KA, and by using the same principle, we will obtain this equation. Let us group the equation 8, 9, and 10 and let's write them together. As the result, we obtain the equation number 11. The equation number 11 can be written in the vector matrix form. How did I obtain this form? Well, I simply took these terms and I put them in a vector over here. And then as the result, I obtain this matrix. And on the left hand side, I simply have this vector. Consequently, I have this. Now, let us remind ourselves that we introduce notation. This vector is actually P expressed in the coordinate system A. This vector is P expressed in the coordinate system B. And I introduce a new notation over here, R, B with respect to A, where R, B with respect to A, is given over here. This matrix R, B with respect to A, is the rotation matrix. The superscript and subscript notations in R, B with respect to A mean that the rotation matrix transforms projections of a vector from the coordinate system B into the coordinate system A. And this is a very important observation. Again, this rotation matrix actually transforms coordinates from the coordinate system B to the coordinate system A. It doesn't transform the vector, it only transforms the coordinates. Next, let's derive the explicit expression for the matrix RB with respect to A. For that purpose, we introduce this figure. And this figure is nothing less than the figure shown over here, only if you look at this picture from this side. And if we neglect these axes, and we only leave this part. As the result, we obtain this figure. And this axis, determined by IA unit vector, is the rotational axis. The vectors IA, JA, and KA, as well as the IB, JB, and KB are the unit vectors. And by using this fact and taking into account this angle theta, we obtain IB scalarly multiplying IA is equal to 1. This is because these two vectors are collinear. JB scalarly multiplying IA is equal to 0. This is because JB is perpendicular to IA, or better to say IA is perpendicular to JB. Also, IA is perpendicular to KB, so this product is equal to zero. Similarly, this product is equal to zero. Now, let's see what happens over here. We need to determine the scalar product of JB and JA. The scalar product of two vectors is the intensity of the first vector times the intensity of the second vector times the angle between these two vectors. Since the intensity of JB and JA are equal to one and the angle is theta, we simply have over here cosine is theta. 
What is KB's multiplying JA? Let's observe the figure. We have KB and we have JA. If this angle over here is theta and this angle is 90 degrees, the total angle between these two vectors is actually 90 plus theta. Consequently, we have that cosinus of 90 plus theta is obviously equal to minus sinus theta. And that's why I obtained this term. And by using the same logic, we can determine other scalar products. They're given over here. By using these relationships and by substituting them in this expression, we finally obtain our rotational matrix. This is how it looks. This matrix is the rotation matrix defining the rotation of two coordinate systems around the axis xa. Let's summarize everything. This expression implements a mapping. It transforms the projections of the vector p expressed in the coordinate system b into the projections of the vector p expressed in the coordinate system a. Another important property of rotational matrices is that they are orthogonal. That is, if we take the inverse of this matrix, we will see that the inverse is equal to matrix transposed. This is very important since from this equation we can simply write this equation by multiplying the equation by the inverse of RB with respect to A from the left side and we obtain this equation. Now by using this orthogonality relationship we obtain this equation and finally we can express P in B simply as another rotational matrix times P in A, where this rotational matrix is inverse of our original rotational matrix and it's equal to its transpose. More about the properties of rotational matrices can be found in my next tutorial. The tutorial is given over here. In this tutorial, I explain direction cosine matrices.